What do I need to know to start a food business? There are a lot of people who have great ideas about a food product and they're starting from home but they're not sure what are some of the steps and processes I need to take in order to bring that product to market. So in this video, I'm gonna give you 11 tips. They're not gonna cover everything you need to know but it's gonna be 11 great tips to at least get a good footing, a good foundation on what you need to do in order to bring that food product to market. And we're gonna jump into that right now. So welcome back to Marketing Food Online 2. This is our second YouTube channel. You definitely wanna check out down in the description below, we have a brand new channel for food trucks, brand new channel for cottage food laws, which are home-based food businesses, and of course, our first channel, Marketing Food Online. So in this video, I want to bring you some understanding of how it is to bring a food product from your kitchen, from a concept, from an idea, to an actual product that you can sell because I've done over 400 consultations since 2017 and a lot of my clients have always asked exactly what is the process because I have a great recipe, Damien, but I'm not sure where do I take a recipe. And yes, it can definitely be daunting and confusing at first, but in this video, I'll go over 11 things that I think are super important. I'm actually gonna do about two or three more videos to give you some additional tips along the way to help you understand what do I need to know to start a food business. So, number one, completely create your food product. Damien, what does that mean? Well, you need to go from a recipe and a concept to an actual completed product. Something that if you were to present, let's say if I was a retail food grocery store buyer, you need to know and you need to give me every bit of information I need to know about the product and a sample of how it looks, how it's ready to go before you do anything. And here's a reason why I say this, is because a lot of people have a great idea for a food product. They create a recipe, they know how to make it, and maybe they know how to put it like either in a bag or a package or a container, but that's it. There's no label, there's no barcode, there's no branding, there's no logo, there's no look, there's no idea above and beyond just simply making the food product. So have a retail ready, as it's known in the industry, retail ready, shelf ready, packaged food product. So that way, when you begin to approach anybody or begin to sell it or even market it or create uh, social media pages, have a website, you actually have a finalized product, okay? So how does that look, Damien? Well, um, completing a few food product is number one, obviously the recipe. Creating a product and completing it. Number two, what type of packaging are you gonna put it in? Is it gonna go into a bag that's resealable? Is it gonna go into a container, a glass jar? Is it a spice blend? Is it a cupcake? Is it a cookie? No matter what it is, you have to figure out how you want to package it. Now, a complete ready-to-go retail shelf package product, number one, has to have a nutritional analysis. Now, of course, you can actually do that yourself through data-driven analysis, and you can have it done, I think it's about 20 bucks or so on the website I'll have down below this description. Click on that, it'll take you over to our website, and you can take a look at that but create and complete a nutritional analysis. Number two, you gotta have your ingredient listing. You have to have all the ingredients that you're gonna have on it, okay? And that needs to be on the packaging as well. Now, if it's going to be retail ready, you need to have a barcode. So you can actually buy your own barcode and you can do that online as well, but you gotta have a barcode. Then you gotta have your allergen warning. The FDA wants you to make sure that you have an allergen warning on it. And I believe it's nine specific allergens, if I'm not mistaken. You wanna have that on your retail package ready product. And then on the front, of course, you wanna have your logo, your brand. What is the name of your food product? What's the name of your company, okay? You wanna also have the net weight. So whatever the amount of the product that's in the container that's holding it, if it's a bag, like I said, or a jar, do not count that as the weight of the product. The net weight needs to be the measurement of the amount of food product that's actually in the container or package itself, okay? So these elements, when you bring them together, create a finalized retail-ready food product. Now, Damien, why is it so important to have this completely done and ready to go before I do anything? Well, there's a lot of people who, ha who have the idea of promoting and, and pushing and getting social media pages and websites set up for a food product that's not even in production, or an idea that they wanna pre, uh, get a lot of people excited and hyped up about a product, but they have no idea how they're gonna mass produce it. So if you start doing all of that and you get a lot of people interested in buying it, where is your product? Where are you gonna ship it from? Who's making it? 
Are you gonna be able to make a several thousand units of it? Now, keep in mind too, you can't actually make food products from home and ship them over state lines because cottage food laws prohibit that. So you wanna figure out where are you going to make it? Do you have a commercial kitchen ready? Or do you have a commercial facility? Is a co-packer gonna make it, okay? But the idea is you don't wanna create a lot of hype too, too close to the idea that you want to keep people's attention, you wanna let them know that your product is right around the corner, you're just about to release it or you have it available, but if you're doing it six, seven, eight months or even a year out and people are not gonna to remember to come back on your Facebook page to buy a granola bar or a granola mix or a cookie or a cupcake. So you don't wanna create a lot of hype too far out in advance because nobody's going to remember your product. Number two, don't approach a co-packer without a proof of concept. Now, what's a proof of concept? You need to start from home and you need to follow the cottage food laws. You need to actually make your product, sell it, get some feedback. Go to farmer's markets, go to festivals, go to wherever it is that your state allows you to go under their cottage food laws, and you wanna get people's feedback. Hey, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. You know, get some idea of whether or not it's something that would really sell, okay? Now, the one thing to keep in mind too is that selling the product online and selling it locally are really two totally different things. Now, you're gonna get different feedbacks and you're gonna get different levels of interest, and what I mean by that is this, is that you're in your local community, and maybe you have a certain, let's say you start a spice business, you have a certain spice blend that's not gonna go over very well in your local community because maybe just the people within your area don't enjoy that certain type of spice. But you could put it online, you could put it on Amazon, put it on eBay, create a Shopify store, and you could create a website and you're opening yourself up to millions of people all over the country. Now the interest is much different, okay? Now if you're in an area where that certain type of spice blend doesn't go over very well, it could be hugely successful online but it doesn't mean it's gonna be very good in local markets. So keep that in mind too, okay? Number three, starting from home, you can't sell over state lines. There's a lot of misconceptions about, hey, I have an idea, I heard this one guy created a product and he sold it online. And went, well, technically that's illegal because there's only about two or three states and Florida is one of them. I'd have to find out what the other two are. There's a couple of states that only allow you to ship a product from home over state lines. And those are relatively new updates and regulations to existing cottage food laws. But doing it from home, you can't do it legally. You can get into some serious trouble. That's my advice. You do whatever it is that you wanna do, but I can tell you right now that the bulk of cottage food laws across the nation don't allow you to sell it over state lines. So stay local until you are in a commercial facility or you wanna rent a commercial kitchen. That's a totally different thing. So keep that in mind. Don't approach national grocery chains or large chain stores with a product that you cannot fulfill because you are making it from your kitchen when you're starting. Now, the idea of being in retail stuff is great. In some cases, it's great. If you've got logistics, if you've got the marketing in place, you've got the right packaging, and you've got the right ability to disperse and, and, and uh, distribute your product into those stores, it can go over great. But here's the thing. Let's say you approach a national grocery chain and they say, hey, Damien, I love your product. Can you give me 20,000 units? Well, right now I'm making it from home. I don't know, I don't have a co-packer yet. Don't approach a grocery chain. If they show interest and you can't fulfill the order, that's not gonna look good for you, okay? So having the ability to have a co-packer on, on standby and ready to go to fulfill an order that may be placed by a grocery chain that could be thousands and thousands of cases, you can't make that from your kitchen and they're not going to allow you to sell anyways to a retailer because it's against cottage food laws, okay? So make sure that you have yourself set. If you've got a sell sheet that's got a great bit of information, you've got a sample product and the people love it and it's retail ready, make sure you've got that co-packer on, on standby saying, okay, well, guess what? I got an order for 20,000 units. Sure, we can make that for you. And do you ship over to the distribution centers for these grocery stores or do I have to do that? So you need to get that in place too. Number five, make a sell sheet. Yes, so a sell sheet is literally, basically a piece of paper that has all kinds of great information about your product. It has the case pack quantity. What is your turnaround time? Who do they contact? What is your pricing? What's your wholesale pricing? What's your MSRP? And so on. You need to encompass everything about your product on a piece of paper, and that is a sell sheet. Why is that so important, Damien? Well, if you find a buyer and you call up a buyer for a corporate um, local grocery chain and you're in a commercial grocery, your commercial uh, kitchen, you've got the ability to do it. You're not at home. And they say, well, great. Can you send me a sell sheet so I can keep that on hand so I can take a look at it? And then I can also talk with the rest of our buyers about the potential of bringing your product in the stores. Well, the sell sheet is your salesperson. 
These are going to be the guy after you hang up the phone, you're going to send them one of these, or you can email them one. But you've got to have information on a sell sheet that has the information they need to make a decision about selling your product in their grocery stores, right? Number six, don't promote a food product on social media without actually having a food product. This is a question that I get quite often. I have a lot of clients who want to build out social media presence. <clears throat> Similar to what I mentioned before in the beginning, you want to make sure that you actually have a product on hand. Now, if you want to do a pre-release, you know, you want to boost up excitement and interest in your product before it's released, that's good to do. But I would recommend about a two to four week window that you promote a product on social media before you start shipping. That means you really truly need to have your product on hand before you start promoting it on social media about two to four weeks out. Some people do it two months, three or four months. I don't believe in that because of the fact that a lot of people have very short attention spans. And if you spend a lot of time six, seven, eight weeks out trying to promote and run ads and boost up awareness of a product, nobody's going to remember eight weeks after that about to come back and get your granola bar or your energy bar or whatever it may be. So you want to keep that in mind, okay? Not discouraging you from creating buzz, but also keep in mind the time frame and people's attention spans, okay? Number seven is logistics. So how do you handle logistics? Well, Damien, what is logistics? I have no idea what that means. The ability for you to fulfill an order, taking a physical product and shipping it, and knowing that if it gets damaged, are you gonna replace it? Are you gonna refund it? Who gets the credit? Who gets the refund? <clears throat> if you're selling to retailers, retailers have contracts, they're gonna draw up, they're gonna want you to agree to those contract terms, and if product gets damaged in transit, most of the time the grocery stores are not gonna say, hey, we're not responsible for that, you owe us a credit, or you need to reship the product. So you gotta understand the logistics, the movement of your product, shipping it and getting it. Also, how are you gonna ship it? Are you shipping it by case pack? Are you shipping it by 10 cases? Are you palletizing the product? Are you going to ship it directly to the stores that they're gonna to sell to? Or are you gonna to ship to their distribution center? So logistics has a lot to do with it on the back end, and you need to understand how that works. Understand the platforms you sell on. Number eight. So. Here's the scenario. So you've got a fantastic food product. Let's just say this was the food product. You've got a great food product and you wanna sell it and you're in a commercial place. You got a commercial kitchen, it's all yours. You've got all your business licenses, you're ready to roll and you wanna sell online. Guess what? Every single platform is completely different. What does that mean? Well, they operate differently. They have different terminologies. They have different things that you need to understand from metrics. Measuring your customer service feedback, measuring your on-time shipping, on-time delivery. If you're on Amazon, it's different. If you're on Etsy, it's different. If you're on eBay, Walmart, you get the idea. So understand the platforms that you're on. Your online business is going to be successful or not based upon your understanding of the platforms because you don't just put a picture up and some descriptions and then people buy it and you ship it and you can wash your hands and move on. You need to stay on top of emails, damaged products, anything that a customer requests on an email, you need to follow up within 24 or 48 hours. All of these things get timed on these different platforms, so you need to understand how they actually work. Number nine, be persistent. Understand this, whether you have an e-commerce online business selling food products on Amazon or Amazon Associates, whatever it is that you're doing and people are promoting it through their affiliate links, or if you're selling directly to retailers, you need to be persistent. Success does not happen overnight. It does not happen in a week or a month. It will take you years to have success. If it doesn't, you're one of the very, very, very few who can actually succeed in a very short period of time. But you have to be persistent. If you're the one picking up the phone and you're calling a, bro a buyer for a corporate uh, grocery store buyer, you need to know that they're not going to say off the first conversation, yes, we love your product. There's gonna be a lot of back and forth, maybe yeses and nos. When I got into fresh markets in Atlanta, it took us, I think it was about six or seven phone calls back and forth just to get them to give us an opportunity. So that's just with one buyer. We had a lot of buyers that just said no, but I didn't stop there. Yeah, I was persistent in doing what I was doing, so it got us into our stores. Be persistent. Number 10, never use a food broker when you're just starting from home. Do as much research, development, and everything that you can do on your end to get your business started. I have a lot of people who ask about food brokers. Food brokers are very ex costly, very expensive, especially when you first start because it's probably a good likelihood you don't have the budget for them. Plus, there's no guarantee that they're going to make your 
business a magical success. So stay away from food brokers when you first start. You don't necessarily need them. I've actually never used a food broker for anything we've done, and we've had great success through e-commerce over the past 13 years. So keep that in mind. A lot of you may ask about them, you may Google them, may people say, hey, maybe you need to get a food broker. Just do it on your own. You need to know every aspect of your product, your marketing, your e-commerce sales, your business, the ins, the outs, the profits, the loss, everything. You need to be on top of it, okay? And down the road, maybe maybe you should tap into a food broker, but I don't think you necessarily need one. Nowadays, you can go online and create an e-commerce business way, way with minimal amount of staffing and no need for food brokers. Number 11, <clears throat> build your website. I say build your website. Don't have someone build one for you. I sometimes recommend this in some cases, but most of the time I actually don't like it. The reason being, I personally have built out all of our websites. It has taken a lot of years to understand how it works, but I can now build a website pretty much blindfolded with my hands tied behind my back because I've done it so often. The reason why I say this, not to brag, but to tell you it's very important that you understand how your website works. If I were to build a website for you and I turned it over to you and said, hey, Susie, John, there you go, you're all set, good luck. You have no idea how it works. You have no idea how to navigate through the back end of the website. And you need to know that stuff because as an entrepreneur in e-commerce business, even if you're selling to retail, you're still gonna have a website, right? If you're not doing e-commerce websites and maybe you're not selling on Amazon, you're just selling to retailers, you need to know about how to add additional blog posts, how to edit a website, what you need to do about your SEO, images uploading, uh, data information, descriptions, all of these things that you need to have on your listings or information on the website, you need to know how that works. Because if I built a website for you, two weeks later you've got a problem and you email me and say, hey Damien, I definitely need some help with this and I'm like, well I can't get to it the next two or three months, then your website's gonna have that problem, that issue for two or three months because you didn't take the time to understand it. So build a website out. There's most of these platforms like Shopify, uh, online businesses that go through Weebly, they go to Shopify, they go through Wix, they go through GoDaddy. Most of these platforms have made it so simple for you to build a website. It's literally drag, drop, add your product, very simple. So take the time to learn it because it's gonna be very important for you. So these are 11 things you need to know when you ask the questions, what do I need to know to start a food business? You wanna keep these things in mind. I'm gonna have two or three other videos that I'll have some additional information too. This is not an all-encompassing 11 things, but it's gonna give you a good understanding of what you really need to know to get started, okay? So if you have any questions on what do I need to know to start a food business, let us know down below if you needed some more information than the 11 things I just listed, and I'll get to it as soon as possible, and I'll see you guys on our next video. Thanks for watching Marketing Food Online, and if you are looking to create your own food truck, start a home-based food business under the cottage food law, franchise a food operation, start a packaged food business, private label your own food product, sell on Amazon, get your own online store or sell food online. Remember to subscribe and check out these videos for more resources. Take care.